I wanted to uh, go back to the beginning of when you first uh, uh, engaged in uh, politics. What were your political views before you joined Antifa? Um, I was sort of a, a I guess, American-style um, sort of uh, centre-right libertarian, and that I viewed that the you know the whole the problem is the government. The government's wrong and capitalism is wonderful and that, um, yeah, that basically the, the, the U.S. government was corrupted. They were kind of owned and operated by banks and, um, and that their foreign policy was uh, disastrous. And those two issues were my biggest concerns politically. And so how did, because obviously you didn't start out with uh, far left views, how did you come to uh, believe that uh, joining Antifa and being involved with the far left was the answer? Well, I started to attend uh, sort of rallies in Sydney um, and a few political events. I got sort of really, I started to become more and more active and actually act on my political views when the West was thinking about invading Syria and I think about 2012, um, right when the sort of Syrian civil war was kicking off. And um, I had massive concerns about that. And so I started going to all these events and then I was hanging out in Sydney's inner West, um, which, you know, is near Sydney University and it's quite a progressive sort of town, uh, suburb and uh, by osmosis, I, sort of started to hear more and more sort of left-wing ideas. But then it wasn't until I started going to the Black Rose Anarchist Bookshop and having conversations with them that I, I slowly sort of absorbed those politics. And, and so that obviously led you to becoming uh, involved in Antifa and being an organiser for it. How did that uh, process progress? Yeah, so I, it, was, it was a slow process. Um, so I slowly went from sort of wearing my own dress or clothes um, for like six months hanging around these sort of uh, anarchists. And then I slowly just started to wear all black to, <laughs> to show how individualist I was. Um, and because that's what everyone else was doing. And I was sort of going to these um, rallies and uh, started to live in these squats and stuff. Um, and it was maybe about a year when I was in the anarchist subculture that a guy um, joined the scene who had been over from Europe and he was, uh, his whole thing was anti-fascism. And so he was sort of like agitating towards doing anti-fascist stuff. And, you know, at the time, a lot of the anarchists were kind of like not that interested in the whole radical right thing. They were like, you know, they're, they're such a minor, irrelevant thing that it, it doesn't seem useful. But this guy was you know, certain that we, we had to go smash the fascists or whatever. And um, and then there were sort of a few sort of actions around, um, I guess, Australia First Party. Um, and then it wasn't until the Reclaim Australia rallies kicked off that the sort of Antifa and the, and the radical left started to sort of get obsessed about the radical right. Now, obviously, it was a radical transformation for you politically. Uh, did you ever, uh, during uh, your time in the, the early days, have second thoughts uh, about Antifa that, you know, or maybe, you know, these guys are, you know, a bit too uh, radical? Did that ever enter your mind? Yeah, absolutely. I thought that it was, I, I did have concerns that it would just sort of degenerate into some sort of gang warfare um, and that, you know, it was the first time I saw myself being at risk of sort of physical violence as well. I had those concerns and I remember one of the radical leftists I was dating at the time, she had her reservations um, about the whole Antifa thing. But um, yeah, I, I did have those sort of dissenting ideas in my head. But then over time, I guess um, the narrative that you know, that the, the, the radical right was this impending threat that was going to take over Australia, sort of, I guess, won out in my mind. And then, you know, I started to perceive, I guess, the radical right being a bigger threat than they actually are. And then secondly, I also feel that when your politics is relating to so such abstract concepts as the patriarchy and capitalism and, and all these systems of control, right? Um, 
it's very hard to see any kind of progress in terms of how your activities are changing society because the goals are just unrealistic. And so I actually think that one of the reasons people get into the Antifa thing is because you get to see a tangible result. There's actually a, there are actual radical right wingers that you can impact. And so I feel that gives you a sense that you're related to your goals. While a lot of the other politics and activism often is very abstract. Uh, uh, what you mean by that is that uh, you can see that you're, you know, intimidating and actually, in some cases, physically hurting these, you know, uh, right-wing activists. So, is that what you mean by that? So, when you get to, like, say, picket um, a, a far right-wing event and stop that from happening, that gives you a sense that you're doing something when you know, handing out flyers or going to some rally or whatever, it's a less of a tangible result of, of your actions. And uh, I've heard you talk about this, that uh, Antifa and other uh, radical uh, groups, they, they tend to attract uh, people who are looking for meaning in life and don't have uh, much else uh, going on in, in their lives. Can you explain a bit further about uh, how that uh, process or how, how it worked for you? Yeah, yeah, well, I think, um, I mean, I think I did have meaning in my life. Um, so, you know, I had a sort of promising career as a stand-up comedian, and um, it was sort of at the point in my career where I needed to kind of jump up to the next playing field and start doing, like, the, the comedy festivals. And I wasn't conscious, this, conscious of this at the time, but, you know, a lot of people are often afraid of success because... The more successful you get, the more responsibility you have to have. Um, and, you know, in my mind at the time, I was like, oh, well, what if nuclear war happens because of Syria? What about all the deaths in the Middle East? I mean, these things seem so much more important than my little life and my career. But that was, I think often when we do things, we pick our, we choose the, the narrative for our motivation as being the most noble narrative. While in reality, there could be other motivations that we're less conscious of. And I wondered to what degree was getting involved in this radical politics a way of avoiding um, the, the burden of responsibility of, uh, of sort of running my own life and my own career. And so as you kind of get further and further into this political realm, it seems like the other aspects of your personality and identity get um, further and further behind until, you know, the, this, this activism and stuff takes over your whole identity. And then once that happens, it's, it's very hard to get out of, and it's very hard to see beyond it as well. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.